guys get back to Los Angeles and there's a little bit of a pause with the band. And that's when, at that time, I'm playing with an artist called Jeff Scott. And uh, coincidentally enough, the biggest gig I ever played with Jeff Scott was opening up for Tell Tuesday, two nights at the Palace uh, in in Hollywood. And that was by far the pinnacle of my career with, with Jeff Scott. And then a lot of people are coming up to me saying, you know, Roxy, you should be in this band called Candy because they all look like you. They have the same hair. And I was wondering if there was anybody that was coming around to you guys saying, maybe you should check out this guy, Roxy, because he kind of looks like you guys. And we all had the same black leather jacket. We all had this, like I said, the same black spiked hair. And uh, there, there it is. is. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Whose hair is bigger, folks? And that that's me and me and John the Hawk Schubert right there on the right hand side of that photo. But and that's Gilby Clark next to me. And then of course, uh, that's our illustrious songwriter, Jonathan Daniel, right there. Um, wow. Whose hair was bigger? Did did you get that same thing when you were uh sort of scouting for another player? How did that how did how did I get in your band? I guess is like well, you know, it, uh, I, I know I saw Jeff Scott at some point. I mean, it was, it was Wong's. Every, we, we all, everybody saw everybody at Wong's, right? Um, Adam Wong's West, right? That was one of the one of the staple clubs of Los Angeles during that time. And Jonathan had been, uh, you know, when we weren't doing our candy thing, he, he was booking the bands at Adam Wong's West, so he knew you. And I think, I think, you know, he knew you, and he's the one who brought you to. The rehearsal that night because we had just parted ways with Kyle and we kind this is here's 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 the here's how long we've known each other right it was December 1985 the last candy show was Portland on December the 2nd and then Kyle just wanted to go do his own thing um and for a couple of weeks we just said well I don't know what we're gonna do but let's just we were supposed to make another video we were supposed to go to Japan we had all this stuff in the pipeline and we were just trying to put a band back together. I'm, I'm not sure if Gilby knew what he wanted to do, stay with it or do something else. Um, but we met you, you were like one of the first guys we met and just like, it was like, this works right away. And so yes, yeah, 35 years now. Um, but yeah, you wow. fit right. That Gilby, was... Gilby kind of wasn't sure. And then he came back to candy after we tried right. a few singers out you'll remember oh dude we tried singers out like okay, so i so i get in with these guys and the date that you just told me because it just i i did the math of myself it was my 20th birthday i wasn't even 21 yet and um i was december 1st you know 85 was my 20th birthday i'm i'm in now i'm associated a couple uh, like a, a couple weeks later i'm associated with this band called candy which is one of the biggest bands in los angeles folks they have this record deal um we would we would get into clubs i remember one of the first appearances that we sort of made together as a group was going it was at the roxy theater on sunset going to see guns and roses opening up for la guns do you remember that show i do yeah yeah yeah, and I think we all collectively went, "Holy shit! Who is this band, Guns N' Roses?" Yeah, that was that was the impression that they would give in a club. You would come out going, "Ah, uh, that I don't." Well, first of all, if you could hear when you came out, I remember seeing Guns N' Roses at, at the Whiskey and just going, "I think I'm, I think my hearing is permanently damaged." It was the loudest thing, and it was funny because later on, when the record came out, you're like. Oh, this is how that song goes because it was just so sonically loud you couldn't even tell what "Welcome to the Jungle" was. But then on vinyl, you're like, "Oh, okay, hey, it's a pretty good song." Like, but when you're in there, it just sounds like you're standing in front of a jumbo jet. So, um, uh, but yeah, I, I, re I remember listening to the beginning. Uh, I remember the first time I ever listened to "Appetite for Destruction." It was on cassette tape in the parking lot because I think yeah. Jonathan got Jonathan because he booked Madam Wong's he got an advanced copy of Appetite for Destruction and I went out to the parking lot and listened to it in my club in my uh, car oh my god that picture Vic is bringing back some crazy memories that building in there was so decadent folks if you knew Madam Wong's was didn't it used it it started out as a mortuary right I think so yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then it became a rock club and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm telling you, folks, this is no, like uh, you're a, absolutely right. I do remember going out to the parking lot into his 240Z and listening to Appetite going. Wow. Things are changing. That's the statement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we did we did try a lot of singers out, and because my memory is hazy because of my you know old fashions that I like to drink these days, um, do you remember some of these singers that we tried before Gilby came back into Candy and started singing? Because I know one of them was Ricky Rackman of the yeah. world famous Cat House, and, and and when we when he came down to audition. Ricky and I just became really not good friends with each other and stuff. And then we just ended up hanging out with each other because he had another club called Ice or something. But yeah. do you remember some of those other singers? Um, there was a guy named Miles who had fronted a band in L.A. back when the Starwood was still open. So this would have been 80, 81. Um, Jonathan had, would have seen the band. I don't I don't I can't think of Miles last name. He was a good yeah. singer. There was just, he was there up was just, there. He, we actually, I thought we almost had a, we, we, he was definitely on, on the top list. Top well, we list. made a demo with him. Um, I don't know if I have it anymore, but we did go, we did make a demo with him. He had a great voice. I just don't know that there was that X factor or whatever the thing is, you know. Um, yeah, we, that's how we met Ricky. Uh, this is something I really just, I want to say, we tried out John Cicada. Really? There was a couple of guys that we tried out who were really good, but we're just kind of like, ah, it doesn't really see, see like, but I want to think that I, cause later on I saw some guy on TV and I go, I think we tried this guy out. And I want to think it was maybe John Cicada, but I, I don't, I'm just my, that, that part of my, I, I think it's because of the trauma of losing the band and all of that, like those six months of 86 were are just sort of lost to me. That's my, that's my just fuzzy period because I just, just wasn't us talking to... about this Hawk. Just us talking about this. I remember Vicki James Wright from the band hurricane Alice, I believe tried out. You're right. You're right. You're right. And, and it's there funny. Was... You'd think that we would be able to walk around and go, hey, we're candy. I mean, you know us. We've been around the, the scene for four or five years. We have a deal on Polygram Records. You want to try it? And everybody was like, nah. We, I remember we tried. Oh, we, uh, we went down to Retail Slut on Melrose and talked to Tammy Down, who, and me and Jonathan said, hey, you want to try out for our band? You, you know, he looks cool and everything like that. He goes, nah, I'm kind of putting this band together. I'm really into it. And we're like, okay. But it's yep. just like, couldn't really get anybody interested it was i think we reached out to michael monroe through our, well, having managers that i think we might have even reached out to john wade i can't remember but i know we reached out to michael monroe and there was just nobody was interested and were uh, you with me that that opening night that the faster pussycats first show at the central which is now the viper room were you were you and did you go to that gig as well with me probably. yeah yeah probably all right yeah. And I remember, in, in the, in just to wrap up that whole singer audition, there was one guy, and I don't know who it was, he just kept going to the bathroom and coming out really, really energized. So, he'd sing a song, then he'd go in the bathroom and go, I think he's doing coke. Oh, yeah. God, you see, see you remember more than I do. I, I do I, remember more than, I, I mean, now that it's, it's all coming back to me. I remember that exact, because wasn't that uh, rehearsal studio that you had way out in like uh, Los Feliz or something like that? Yeah. It was at the end. It was the end of the road of melrose i think yeah 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 that's right wow. that, that's exactly the right place uh paul oh my God. so <laughs> what ends up happening is we end up getting gilby back into the band and gilby starts singing in the band and we actually oh, oh there was one guy wait a second before he, we did a show at madam wong's as candy x do you remember yes. him little I still dio little dio yeah what was yeah. his name jeff something I, I can't remember his last name. And he was from the Bay Area. And I remember. He was a good singer. Uh, yeah, but. Yeah, he could howl. But I remember everybody at Madame Wong was just like staring at us going. Like, what What are you doing? Like, this, this, is, this is how you replace Kyle. But yeah, that, that didn't work out. It didn't work out. But I, I remember that back in the day, you would design all our, uh, whether it was Electric Angel 
posters eventually or candy posters, you would be sort of the uh, graphic artist for it. And I'm not sure if Vic has any of those old uh, posters or flyers up of what you would do, but uh, there's some there's some good Electric Angels ones. Is there any uh, candy ones that you had actually done though? Uh, I don't that, I don't have them scanned, but I do have oh. them. Um, Shit. All right. Well, we'll have to put that up somewhere. You know, was fun. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed doing that kind of stuff. I really did because, um, you know, I, I I was really. I used to when I was a kid. I was really into illustration, and um, I, I wanted to be a comic book artist before I ever became a drummer. But um, so I, I really enjoyed doing that. Was something for me to just say. Here's sort of my contribution to the band because I wasn't the I wasn't the good guy going out and passing out the flyers at the clubs and promoting the band every night. I that's not my thing. I'm too introverted for that. But you guys did all that. I'll do the flyers. Yeah, I did it a lot. I remember passing out a lot of flyers that would immediately get passed to the ground. You know, <laughs> I think I think I actually my carbon footprint is so damn big right now because of those damn flyering days of the '80s, man. But do you remember our first gig that we played? I I want to say that it like with Gilby and the first sort of official gig with all the pink guitars and all, all you know, and, and the whole hoopla, was that the LA street scene? Um, I don't think Did, it would have been, no, that would have probably been in September. And I think we started playing in June. I think Gilby finally came back to us in June after our little failed singer search so I want to say, June, and, and honestly, I have all this stuff written down. I, I don't have it at my disposal right now, but it might have been the Roxy or the Whiskey. Um, okay. But do you rem there, – there's a great shot of that, Vic, of, of the Roxy Theater. I mean, that's still there in Los Angeles. But do you remember that Los Angeles street scene show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do ha – I have some pictures of that, too. They're, they're pretty epic. I was a redhead at that time, but um, – <laughs> yeah, we, we had the street scene the year before with with original candy as well, and and we opened up for <laughs> DMC. <laughs> it just get perfect fit. Weirder than that, we were sharing a dressing room with Run DMC, and they went on mm -hmm. right after 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 we finish uh, talking about the kids in the city. They they come up and you know do uh, whatever they're you know, I don't know. <laughs> Well, at one point, and this is where my memory gets a little bit fuzzy, uh, Candy sort of ends up splitting into two factions. And one, it's basically, you know, one, the three of us, Jonathan, uh, myself, and John Schubert, uh, are one faction. And Gilby Clark, is, it's, it, and it's always been amicable, I would like to say. There was nothing unamicable about it. But we just ended up splitting. Gilby went on to form a band called Kill for Thrills. And from Kill for Thrills, go on to GNR, which we all know in the history, and then obviously come back to his solo career where I came back to his band as well. But that's a whole other podcast to talk about. Um, this we're talking about this faction of the Electric Angel uh, faction. And it's me, you, and Jonathan at that point. We go on another sort of singer search. But this time we find the front man of Los Angeles, I think, you know, and again, another out of towner that's come in, but you know, this guy just commands the stage and that would be the single named Shane. So how did, how did he come into our lives? Do you remember? And what year was it? Um, it was 87. And you know, to just, to just to bookend the candy two, the, the Ryan Gilby candy, um, I, I, if Gil, if Gilby came back into the fold, like in the middle of 86, we played until November of 87, but it, it's funny because that was the candy that was really fun. Remember we used <laughs> to go to Phoenix on the weekends and play with the gentlemen after dark and yes, we, yes. We had so much fun being in a band. It was really nice. And of course we have two guitar players to really beef up the sound. So that was a fun candy. I actually, now that I think of it, it was, it was kind of short-lived, but it was fun. But here's the crux of it all. We, you, and the same thing happened with the Angels. Reheating leftovers, the band that has splintered with the record deal and, and everything's kind of on the shelf, it, it doesn't work. But you're so invested in making it work that you can't really see it. There's... <laughs> 
Wow, that, that would be one of those fun times that the uh, Candy 2 sort of had because we were obviously big Kiss fans. And this was one Halloween. Thank you for this Vic uh, pick, Vic. Uh, this is not a Vic pick, actually, but it's uh, me being, uh, gee, well, I'm just looking at it. But it's me being wow. Ace. I yeah. was Ace. Gilby Clark is Paul. You were obviously Peter Chris, and uh, Jonathan Daniel was Gene Simmons. It's pretty authentic. I think that's in Gilby's apartment yeah. uh, on Melrose Place. Am I correct with that? Yeah, that's right. And we were on our way up to, I think, the Central. Ricky Rackman's, uh, uh, yeah, Halloween party at the Central. So I think that's 80, Halloween 87, maybe, which means we are only a few weeks away from wrapping it up <laughs> i don't remember honestly i don't remember any kind of falling out i think gilby just saw that like candy we're just limping along and and you don't want to kill this thing that you put so much time and energy into but it's really like we can see things are going in a different direction so you know he started putting something together i think he even actually asked me if i wanted to come play with him but i kind of say like, well you know what jonathan's kind of like my guy i'm just it's i'm i'm his yeah. I'm his lieutenant and I, I just stuck with it and some and, and we all agreed to just say let's just do one final show it was at the Roxy Kyle came back and sang with us and we just said okay after this I remember that show this, I was I, I watched it from the top view down I think I played some songs then I went up to the dressing room and then Kyle came up I think the, the last song he played was a song called last radio show yeah, yeah. and that was it with perfect yeah, ending yeah. I can't even remember if it was just him and Gilby playing it, but I think we did a complete show and then Kyle just came on to do a couple of songs. And he might've done the last radio show. I don't remember if it was with a band or just him and Gilby, but but it was all, to me, it was all friendly. And at, we had some, we had met Shane like just a few weeks before. And I think Jonathan nicked him from uh, Josh Fields. Josh said, hey, <laughs> I'm a really cool singer. And Jonathan just said, I got Do that. you now? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Tell um, me more. <laughs> and uh, and we started rehearsing with Shane even while Candy was just getting ready to be put to bed because Shane was at that show. So this is early November 1987. And both our new band, Electric Angels, and Gilby's new band, Kill for Thrills, we both, we both debuted at Ricky's New Year's Evil on New Year's Eve 1987. So it, it only took us about a month and a half to just both put two brand new bands together and actually debut them on the same night. So that's, that's amazing. That kismet, I think, you know. You know what the other amazing thing is, folks? We now have John Schubert with really good internet. So let's just let's cross oh. our fingers. You look you're looking, you're looking great, my friend. And yeah, everybody that's in the chat. Everybody that's in the chat, thanks for hanging out. Um, if you just joined us, hit that subscribe button right now on the YouTube official channel. If you're listening to us on the audio platforms, you know what? Pull your car over or stop what you're doing and get on over to Ryan Roxy official YouTube and uh, hit that subscribe. So thank you very much. We are here with John Schubert just catching up. Every time I think that, I, okay, we're just going to go through this going bad to get forward really quickly. Just to give a quick recap, when I'm when I'm really invested, like I am right now, I'm intrigued about this story. And I'm intrigued about what happens to us. <laughs> and, and I remember from Electric Angels, after that New Year's Evil debut, we end up working. And this is where Wikipedia can mess you up because this is a non-fact. Folks. This is fake news. Wikipedia page says that Bruce Kulick managed us. Which is just not true. He did, though, produce our some of our first demos. Yeah. And one of the songs on that was, I think, was it uh, You Put the X in Sex or Just the X in Sex? Was that the name of the song? I think we just called it X in Sex. Yeah. X in Sex. And then really coincidentally, like about like six months later, Kiss comes out with a song called Let's put the X in sex. Now, how did how did that first demo come along? And how did Bruce Kulick enter into our world into our orbit? How did that work out? Hmm. Do you remember? Was it a Wayne Sharp thing? And Wayne Sharp was was helping co-manage the band at that point, and he was involved with Howard Marks, or it had some sort of kiss connection still with the kiss. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we, 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 can't, we can't tell any of the story without, without Wayne Sharp. Candy met Wayne in, in spring of 85 when we went down to Florida and New Orleans to do a series of dates. Uh, Wayne was working for a local promoter down there. And, and the guy just, he was so, he was so great. He, he, um, he helped us out so much. He ended up coming to LA and then he just wanted to like, uh, well, he got, he got real jobs like in the entertainment industry, but he just wanted to do what he could for Candy. And then the angels and the, um, and I think Wayne, yeah, he was working for Howard Marks. He might have been, Ki yeah, he was Kiss's tour manager around that time. So yeah, and, and I think he and Bruce might have, uh, I don't know, they they lived on Doheny or something like that. But um, what apartment was it? What apartment was it that we yeah. went to some sort of Christmas party? Yeah. Uh, there was a Christmas party with Wayne Sharp, Bruce Kulick, Gene Simmons, and Shannon Tweed, and Shannon Tweed's sister were there. We yeah. did a, a, a sort of a Secret Santa giveaway, and I, and that's when I received my ice cream maker from Gene Simmons, and he was so mad that it was me that got the ice cream maker because I think it was a it was the most prestigious gift that was at the gift giving, and he he didn't want a guy from a rock band to get his ice cream maker, but I did, Gene, and I don't have it today. I'm telling you, I do you. remember I that. Party. I do remember that party. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because when Candy was with. Howard Marks, and we were in New York. One of the pictures that, that Vic put up there where we're standing in front of metal grading, that was our album cover uh, shoot. Um, yeah. We run into Paul Stanley. We run into Gene Simmons. They know who we were. Yeah, that was our on New York on our album cover shoot. Um, so they knew who we were. Gene and Paul knew who we were. In fact, you'll remember one time, Candy with you and Gilby, we were rehearsing once and Paul came to rehearsal with Howard Marks. And then we all went out to dinner later because Paul was in town to maybe produce this band called Guns N' Roses. And he passed. And wow. we all went out to dinner later on. So we, I'm not saying we're best friends, but we, we knew them. We got to go to the shows if we were in town. We actually wanted Paul to do a little quick vocal thing on the Candy album, um, but because they were in town at the time. Um, anyway, um, so yes, so Bruce Kulick is just kind of falls into it. And he, he, you know, he did do the demos. I think we did three or four songs. And then he goes, yeah, he goes on tour with Kiss. And the next thing you know, they got that song. But you know what? I didn't like that song anyway. So let him have it. Hello, folks. Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. Thanks. Yeah!